Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. A week of hell. It has been a week of torture and sleepless nights for 29-year-old Jamil Mendes Sr. since the mystery disappearance of his only child, a two-year-old boy named after him. While the family, concerned neighbors, and the police have come multiple locations across several communities since the toddler vanished from his Rasta Corner home in Freetown, Clarendon last Thursday, they are yet to make a breakthrough. Moda Lofi son again. Moda really Lofi Simison again, a heartbroken Mendes told reporters. He said that he has not been himself since the only child he has vanished without a trace, and the nights are particularly painful. When we go in at night time, and my son is not there, like me used to, my mind just say all over the world, said Mendes. Me no find myself a perform like me know me can. Me no know how to cope, me just a try to hold up. Like Jamie's mother, Mendes said that he has dismissed initial reports of his son being missing as a prank. When me just hear, me say I must see somebody around with me. Maybe them did hear the alarm sound, then they would have realized the baby because I must somebody around with me, he said. But when me see hours and hours up until the next day, I mean I really see my baby, me turn now a different person. Head of the operations of the Clarendon Police, Deputy Superintendent Cardoso, to reporters that other agencies have joined the investigation into the infant's disappearance. When we get information about possible locations, we search immediately. We haven't got any good lead as it relates to where the child is, but we are continuing with the investigation, he said. Cardoza said the intelligence suggests that the child is still alive, but declined to give details citing the sensitive nature of the case. And the family is hanging on to hope as they remain relentless, in their effort to find baby Jamil. Mendes said that he has always found news of missing children traumatizing, but it has been a cooling experience as he faced the heartbreaking fate of parents he often empathized with. When Missy picking a missing, me always feel a way and wonder why them take them away, especially the young ones like age 12 down. Me always say them something a traumatized babies and see come reach me now, me kind of paranoid, he said. Mendes, a taxi operator, theorized that babies to me love for cars would have made him susceptible to people who prey on the children. May I pray say if him see a pro box car, he will say dada, and him just stop and take him up and gone. From him a baby, when me wash the car and me and him, if me in a the car, him come climb up in a me lap and take the steering wheel same a drive, him love car like that, explained the father. Mendes is puzzled that no one in the community seemed to know what could have possibly happened to his child. He is making a desperate plea for the safe return of his son. May I beg them please, no matter what, if I even a case where them have my baby and want something, make the demands and may see if me can reach up to it or whatever, he appealed. The child's mother, Kira Williams, said that the last seven days has been distressing. Me missing laugh, in kiss. How him jump up on me and say, Mommy, she reflected, vowing not to give up hope for a happy reunion. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of two year old Jamil Mendes Jr. is being asked to contact the Longville Park Police at 876 902 5047 119 or the nearest police station. Teen freed after alleged abduction. A 16 year old girl who told relatives, a horrid tale of being abducted Tuesday night said she sought safety in the house of a 91-year-old woman after being freed by her captor. On arrival at the house on Wednesday, the elderly woman's caregiver used her mobile phone to call the teenager's grateful mother who alerted the police. The girl was allegedly abducted in Chantilly Gardens, Westmoreland and end up in Banbury Bart section of the parish about two miles away. According to the girl's relatives, she was at home when a male peer called her outside. They were returning from a shop in the community when a man jumped out of his car, pulled her in and drove off. The alleged incident happened shortly after 7.30 p.m. Him say him hear her scream out. The man pushed her in the car, the girl's uncle reported on Wednesday. Me feel it, not even food me couldn't eat last night, he added. He said residents saw a white tears a kingfish motor car speeding through the community at the time of the alleged abduction. The girl's mother said she was worshipping at church when she got the news of her daughter's disappearance. But fling with the phone, she said, of her reaction to the news that left her in shock and disbelief. 
Those emotions were replaced by joy on Wednesday when she was told her daughter has been found. Me glad say she no dead and me give God thanks, said the teenager's mother. She shared details of the event as told by her daughter. She say him put a bag over her head and use a card and tear on her head and her hands, the woman said. Him them loose her hand and let her go and she run in a decaying field, she added. The teenager eventually spotted a house and knocked at its door. An elderly woman let her in and allowed her to spend the night. Her relatives contacted the police the next day and the young girl underwent tests and treatment at the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital. On Wednesday, the local police confirmed that a missing person report had been found about 10 the night before. The Center of Investigation of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse, Sisoka, has launched an investigation into the incident. Men left them up to God, you know. God no ready for them yet. Them a dear come, the mother said, of anyone involved in the alleged abduction of her child. The teenager's grandfather, who lives with her and her mother, has also been devastated by the alleged incident. Me feel it, man. Me miss her last night. What them do to her, me no know, he said. Mandator mask wearing reinstated in schools. As Jamaica grapples with the fifth wave of COVID-19, the Minister of Education and Youth reinstated the mandatory wearing of masks in schools with immediate effect and until further advised. The Ministry said that the mask mandate is in response to the rise in COVID-19 infection rate. School administrators have been reporting an increase in suspected and confirmed COVID-19 cases among staff and students. In a press release, the Education Ministry advised that students and staff who turned up to school without a mask should not be denied access but should be assisted with a mask to facilitate teaching and learning. Administrators are also being reminded to re all key stakeholders about the protocols to be observed including regular washing of hands and temperature checks. The Ministry is also advising school administrators that where it becomes necessary, they may need to revert to remote learning in responses to cases of exposure to COVID-19. This is to provide for the continuation of learning, the sanitizing of classroom buildings, observation of quarantine standards, as well as for affected persons to be tested and treated accordingly, the ministry stated. Before a decision is taken to revert to remote learning, the principal board chairman must consult with the regional director education officer for approval and guidance. It must be noted that provision should be made to continue the learning program for students who do not have access to online learning. The Ministry is reminding all stakeholders that they have to be responsible to limit the spread of COVID-19 and is encouraging school leaders, teachers, parents, support staff and students to get vaccinated against the virus. For additional information and queries, school administrators can contact the regional office or the assigned education officer. Face off the union representing the majority of the island's teachers and legislators all but clash on Thursday over a number of provisions in the Jamaica Teaching Council JTC bill as leaders in the profession stood their ground on concerns with the proposed law in the face of equally strong defense from the Education Ministry and other government members of Parliament. The main impasse arose over the definition of teacher, a specific academic requirement to continue in or into the profession. Jamaica Teachers Association JTA President Winston Smith told reporters following a Martin sitting of the Joint Selected Committee reviewing the bill that it took effect now 3,258 specialist teachers would be affected, along with 5,840 in early childhood sector and 24 from Edna Manu College of the Visual and Performing Arts. In a detailed review of the bill, the JTA questioned whether the intent was to rid profession of pre-trained teachers and must, given that most, if not all, basic school teachers do not have a bachelor's degree, the proposal's starting point for entry into the profession. Simit asserted that the definition of teacher would wipe out all teachers who now only hold a diploma. If this bill, in its current form, is allowed to go through, it will in effect remove the persons that teach in diploma the person who has qualifications from the VTDI Vocational Training Development Institute and persons with certificates in education. This bill, if enacted, would remove those persons the minute it is signed into law, he told the committee chaired by Education Minister Favour Williams. 
The JTA president insists on the point after the education ministry won against sending the wrong signal to the country. When you characterize this bill as doing that, you are sending a very wrong signal to Jamaica. This is a headline that is going to be out there on this bill. You know that's not the intent of the bill. And when you telegraph that to Jamaicans and to other teachers, I have to wonder what is the underlying message that you want teachers to get, William said, exiting host of protests from opposition Senator Lambert Brown. The legislators and the teachers debate over Section 24 of the bill, which criminalizes the practice of teaching without a license and defines a teacher as a person who has successfully completed a bachelor's degree in education or its equivalent, or a first degree with a postgraduate diploma in education in an educational teaching program recognized in the country in which the person is qualified. Attorney Julian Mowat, who made the JTA's oral submission, said the legislation is in conflict with the realities of teachers on the ground, arguing that the definition of teacher in the provision may present a constitutional breach. She said if the intent is to get rid of pre-trained teachers, then it should be done in a fair and equitable manner. We need to bear in mind that these people were functioning without the system before the passage of the legislation. So, if that is not whole gutted of the profession, I don't know what is she stated, stressing that the JTA's argument is in relation to teachers who are already in the system and performing satisfactorily. Mowers argued that if the law is underliterally applied without reference to the teachers and their contracts, it could be in contravention of the constitution which requires due process in such matter. Former State Minister of Education Floyd Green was adamant that the educators were incorrect in their position. It is not factual that this will wipe out teachers in the classroom now. It is untrue. The cost provisions have been made for everybody who is now in the classroom to qualify under the Act. If the Act is passed now, all the people are in the classrooms providing instructions. There is a designation under which they could apply, he said, also arguing that the criminal offences in the Act do not criminalise the profession as a whole. The legislation provides for a transition period of 12 months, but the GTA fears there would be a person of dysfunction in the education system, while teachers scramble to attain authorization to teach from the teaching council and to upgrade their qualifications. The Teachers Association has asked that pre-trained teachers be given six years to attain qualification. JTA Deputy Secretary General Clayton Hall pointed out, no program of study in education lasts for a year. The simple act of being enrolled may not happen until the next year by the time one calendar year would have passed. Hall also insisted that for teachers who will find themselves outside of the system, the law should grant them interim license or authorization to teach during the transition period. Section 29 of the bill gives underqualified teachers the opportunity to apply to the JTC for authorization to teach, a provision with which the JTA also foresees serious problems. It says many teachers would be out of jobs while they seek their authorization, which much being supported by a submission from their employer stating that they are unable to engage a qualified teacher. Adding to that, the council must be convinced that the teacher without a degree possesses skills that are in short up supply on the teaching market. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.